Hello students. In this video, we are going to learn certain concepts of the chapter Control and Coordination of Class 10th Biology. The concept that we are going to learn today in this video is going to be about the structure of the neuron, synapse and the neuromuscular junction. Now to start with, let us understand the basic uh, functions of the neural system or the nervous system. Uh, so to make you understand that, I am just having a simple illustration here. Imagine there is a glass of water and you want to drink that. Now what you do is typically you think you go pick up the glass of water and drink. At a physiological level, there are certain events that are going on at a very rapid pace and that is going to be through the nervous system or the neural system. Now three things happens. There is going to be the sensory input. Right. So what is sensory input? So when you are going to see that glass of water, you're thinking to drink it. And so the eye, which is the sensory organ, gives the information to the brain as a sensory input. And this information is passed on to one type of neuron called a sensory neuron. Now the brain, after receiving the sensory input, it's going to process the information and decides on to what should be done. Right. What should be done with the information so that we can get the work done. The work right now is to drink the water. So it is going to integrate the information and decide a course of action as to what should be done. And it is going to give a output. The output is called motor output. And this information is passed on to an effector organ. Effector organ in this case is a target organ. In this case is the muscles. So the muscles of the hands are going to contract the muscle fiber should contract so that we can pick up the glass of water and drink it and this information this motor output information is passed on via the motor neurons so there are three major functions as we said the first one is going to be the sensory input then integration then motor output so remember so the neural system uses its millions of sensory receptors to monitor changes occurring both inside and outside of the body each of these changes is called stimulus and the gather information is called the sensory input. In the second step, it is going to process and interpret the sensory input and makes the decision about what should be done at that particular moment and that is called the integration. And in the third step, it is going to dictate a response by activating the effector organs that is the muscles or the glands and this response is called the motor output so that's basically in an overview the function of the neural system or the nervous system in our body so let us understand the structure of the neuron but you have to understand one thing dear students that when we speak about the nervous tissue we typically restrict ourselves to understanding what neurons are and many of you might be knowing that nervous tissue or nervous system is including only one type of cell that is neuron but the answer to that is going to be a no because there is another type of cell that is called the glial cells which are very very important for the functioning of the neurons and together the neurons and the glial cells they are going to help in functioning of the nervous tissue so what are neurons neurons are the nervous cells responsible for the computation and communication that the nervous system provides right so what they do they compute and communicate what should be done what should not be done how should the body re react to a stimulus so all of this information is going to be passed on to the neurons now what is the role of glial cells as i said glial cells are important for the neurons to function so they play a supporting role for the nervous tissue without the glial cells the neurons cannot function remember that so neurons are important but without the glial cell support they would not be able to perform their regular functions so when we talk about the structure of the neuron you know that this particular diagram is from your textbook and majority of the structure includes the cell body dendrites exons and the nerve ending so we're going to learn this with the help of this particular diagram right little bit in detail so let's begin that now you can see here that this is a cell body this area is the cell body and this cell body is important as it is going to contain the nucleus and also all the major organelles now this cell body is going to contain a large number of extensions of the cell membranes and that we call as a 
processes so as you can see here this area here these are all the extension of the cell membrane and these are all called the processes and remember this is something that you are going to find only in the neurons and this is what makes the neural cells different from the remaining of the cells now there is this uh, fiber like structure that is going to elongate from one end of the cell body and this is called the exon and remember the exon is important because the exon is going to help in transmitting the information transmitting the neural impulse or nerve impulse or the electrical impulse or the action potential all of these terms are the same right action potential nerve impulse neural impulse all of these mean the same so they transmit the neural impulse or the nerve impulse or the action potential from one end that is from the cell body to the exon and this exon passes on the information to the nerve ending in this area we are having the nerve ending now you can see here this particular area these are again the branched structure right and these are the highly branched processes as i said these are the extension of the cell membrane the processes the highly branched processes in the cell body is called the dendrites and the dendrites are going to be very important because they receive the information from other cells they can communicate with the remaining cells so the dendrites provides a location right for the other neurons to communicate with the cell body now remember information from the receptors are going to be passed on from one neuron to the next right so how does it go so the information here flows through a neuron from the dendrites across the cell body down to the exon and this gives the neuron a polarity that is the information flows in only one direction that is from the dendrite to the cell body right so from the dendrite to the cell body and then to the exon finally reaching to the nerve ending you can see that the exon is uh, you know wrapped around by this blue color structure and remember this structure here is called the myelin sheath now the myelin sheath acts as an insulation much like the plastic or rubber that is used to insulate electrical wires now the main difference here is the insulation on the wire is continuous there is no gap but here the myelin sheath is going to be present at certain places with a regular interval regular gaps and these gaps are called the nodes of ranvier and it is important for the transmission of the electrical signal in a particular direction now remember the glial cells now they play an important role here also now remember that the myelin sheath is made up of the glial cells so glial cells help in the formation of the myelin sheath around the exons remember again that the exon is going to be wrapped around but not continuous in a discontinuous fashion and that wrapped around structures are called the myelin sheath made up of glial cells so we are talking about the cell body we talked about the exons we talked about the dendrites now we are saying that the information comes from this dendrites to the cell body and reaches through the exon finally to this end and these endings are called the exon terminal or the synaptic knob they contain synaptic knob we'll talk about the structure in a minute now depending on the structure depending on the number of processes right uh, the neurons could be of three types unipolar bipolar and multipolar now when you are having unipolar there is only one extension one processes and that's why it is called unipolar neuron now bipolar neuron you are going to have two extensions or two processes and that is called the bipolar neuron in a multipolar neuron the number of processes are going to be more than two and that's why they are called the multipolar neuron and what we discussed is the structure of a multipolar neuron that is commonly found in the body now what is synapse synapse is basically a neuronal junction that is it is a junction between two neurons or between a neuron and a target cell where they can communicate with each other and the synapse can be of two types what are those electrical synapse and 
chemical synapse now electrical synapse is going to be a direct connection see uh, remember electrical synapse occurs only if the gap between the two neurons is very less right if they are very close to each other then you'll see electrical synapse and what is going to happen here there is a direct connection between the two cells so that the ions can pass directly from one cell to the next that is that electrical impulse or the action potential they can travel directly without the help of any medium but if the gap is a little bit higher we see the chemical synapse which is more common right and here there is in use of a chemical and this chemical is called neurotransmitter so in a chemical synapse a neurotransmitter is released from one neuron which is going to be then transmitted to the second neuron and that's how the neural impulse or the information is passed on from one neuron to the next neuron now let us see this diagram in a little bit detail so as you can see here this is the junction between two neuron so this is the presynaptic neuron the neuron before the synapse is called the presynaptic neuron now this area right remember this area is called synaptic knob which is present at the exon terminal and this synaptic knob contains synaptic vesicles and the synaptic vesicles as you can see here this area they contain a number of neurotransmitters and these neurotransmitters are nothing but these are the chemicals and the gap here between this presynaptic neuron and see this part is the dendrite of the post synaptic neuron so before the synapse here you have the synapse the synaptic left or the gap between the two neurons this is the synaptic left so the neuron before this synaptic left is called presynaptic and after that is called the post synaptic so you have the involvement of the exon terminal or synaptic knob of the presynaptic neuron and the dendrite of the post synaptic neuron so together they are going to form the synapse or the synaptic cleft that is a gap imagine right a information error right the action potential is going to come and then it is going to allow this synaptic vesicles to depolarize and thereby release the secretions in the gap in the synapse in the synaptic cleft now this chemicals or the neurotransmitters are then received by this receptors so these are the receptors that are present on the postsynaptic neurons dendron so in the dendron of the postsynaptic neuron they are going to be received the neurotransmitters are going to be received and once they are received right these neurotransmitters they are going to bring about a new set of electrical impulse that is the information that electrical impulse that was coming from the presynaptic neuron has been passed on to the postsynaptic neuron with the help of this neurotransmitters i hope we are clear with the structure here now there is another structure it is some it is kind of a synapse only but this synapse is between a neuron and a muscle and that's why it is called neuromuscular junction and it is a place the muscle fiber first respond to the signaling by the motor neuron and the excitation signal from the neuron are the only way to functionally activate the muscle fiber to contract the meaning of that is so whenever the muscle have to contract it cannot contract on its own it will contract only if there is a excitation signal from the neuron so as you can see here this is the exon so they are going to bring the information right see uh, action potential so only when they are going to bring the action potential here this neuromuscular junction as you can see here here there are this synaptic uh, knob this is area the synaptic knob and this is the synaptic vesicles and this synaptic vesicles under the influence of the uh, action potential they are going to release the neurotransmitters and then the neurotransmitters goes and help to bring about the contraction of the muscle fiber thereby brings about the contraction in the muscle fiber so that's why the neuromuscular junctions are very important and remember this is the junction between a neuron and a muscle cells let us go back to the first example that we had so in there what we had seen there was the glass of water that had to be picked up and we had to drink the water so the brain sends the information to the motor neuron and this motor neuron is going to connect or is going to inform the muscle fibers 
through the neuromuscular junction as you can see here and thereby allowing or instructing it to contract and that is going to enable us to bring that water or pick up that glass of water and drink it.